Hi people, it's Archivist here, and today I'm going to be doing a review for the 13-inch MacBook Pro 2020. And what we're looking at here is the Intel 10th generation i5, one terabyte, no additional configurations, just a model that you can get off of Apple's website right now. And the interesting thing about the 13-inch MacBook Pro, which has been the case for a very long time, is that it's not particularly specialized in any way. The 16-inch MacBook Pro is the expensive powerhouse. The MacBook Air is the affordable mobile machine. But what exactly is the 13-inch MacBook Pro? Well, it sits in the middle, occupying something of a Goldilocks position. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing because it gets the best of both worlds. It's a decently powerful machine that isn't bottlenecked in the same way as the MacBook Air, um, but it isn't quite as heavy and cumbersome as the 16-inch MacBook Pro. And in terms of comparing it to the previous models that use butterfly keyboards, I think this is a decent upgrade. I did actually, funnily enough, have the 2019 MacBook Pro 13-inch, and there are two key upgrades that stand out to me that have actually affected the way I enjoy the machine. The first one is the keyboard, and I say this as someone who does not despise the butterfly keyboard at all. In fact, I learned to use it perfectly fine and I could type on it fine. I really didn't have too many criticisms with it and I suppose I got lucky in that I didn't have any failures. Of course, that doesn't mean I speak for everyone's experience. I must have just, I suppose, got lucky in terms of the models I received. But having said that, the tactile response on the new Magic Keyboard is just more pleasant to use. And curiously, if I compare the keyboard experience on this to my 16-inch MacBook Pro, which theoretically on paper have exactly the same mechanisms, I, I'm not sure why it is, it could be a manufacturing quirk, but for some reason, the 13-inch MacBook Pro does feel like it has a slightly sturdier, more responsive keyboard than the 16-inch MacBook Pro, which also uses a scissor mechanism but I, I can't tell you why, I'm not sure why, but I do know that if I type on both of them, without question, it feels more solid, is the best way to say it, on the 13-inch MacBook Pro. But uh, that comparison aside, just going back to the, you know, the, the previous model, uh, the keyboard is without question an upgrade, and I suppose I could equally say it's probably one of, if not the best keyboards I've ever used on a Mac, going back to the 2012 MacBook Pro Unibody, which was my previous favorite with very high travel. Uh, but the other difference is something that I suppose not everyone takes advantage of, uh, but the speakers on this machine are quite good. And I found that on the previous 2019 MacBook Pro, the speakers definitely sounded a bit tinny, uh, almost like a phone speaker and whenever I wanted to listen to like a YouTube video or a podcast something like this it always put me off listening through the speakers I often grabbed a pair of headphones because it almost sounded a bit grating uh, in terms of how tinny it was it wasn't terrible for a 13 inch device but when you compare it to these speakers uh, these ones are a lot better they're not quite 16 inch MacBook Pro good but they are perfectly fine for listening to a movie or a podcast for extended periods of time and I really enjoy that. The volume isn't necessarily anything to speak too highly of but for me volume doesn't matter all that much. For me it's more about the quality of the sound over how loud it is. So sound quality and keyboard quality are what I believe to be the best improvements over the previous model. Another thing I noticed is that there's less static sound so I do believe that with the previous 13-inch MacBook Pro, they might have packed it all in a little bit too tight because I had two models that just intermittently would exhibit these just popping electrical static sounds. Were they a big issue? Not really, but it felt a little bit strange coming from a very high quality uh, product, very expensive product. But here, in terms of those strange electrical static sounds, I can say that there has been no issues whatsoever. It sounds uh, basically whisper quiet all the time, unless I'm doing something particularly demanding, in which case the fans come on, but the fans never get deafeningly loud. They're not like PS4 Pro playing God of War loud, uh, but you can definitely hear them if you export a video is the main one, or if you're playing gaming and you disable V-Sync is probably another case where you're getting quite loud. But I do enjoy the fact that during typical operation, shall we say, 
the machine is completely silent unless I put my ear right to the keyboard and I'm intentionally trying to listen to something. But if it's just sitting there on my desk, I, I really can't hear it. And where this is actually quite useful and not just an OCD man's benefit, I guess you could say, is that say uh, you're in bed and you want to listen to a movie or something and you want to have the volume quite low because you want to listen to it maybe as you're going to bed, something I do quite a lot. Um, it means that there's not really any additional background sound that can go over the top of the low volume of the sound you're listening to on the movie. Uh, maybe that's quite a specific scenario, but it's something that I really enjoy. Like, um, I remember back in the day, I used to do a similar thing. I'd be in bed, maybe watching a film late night on my unibody MacBook Pro back in the day. And I remember the spinning hard drive really used to bother me over the top of the... Um, over the top of the speakers and even with things like the 16 inch MacBook Pro you'd think it would be silent but you can hear a certain noise I think it's coming from the GPU or something to that effect it's not completely silent but this device does feel like it's silent almost all the time which is a very nice thing to have uh, also if we compare it to the MacBook Air because I was genuinely considering getting a MacBook Air because I was generically in the market for a highly mobile MacBook and you'd think that the MacBook Air would be the better choice but there are a few things that really dissuaded me from the MacBook Air. Number one was the fact that it wasn't quiet uh, during general operation, the fans would come on way too easily. Like it's not a deal breaker but it's really off-putting I would say. Also, it got a bit too hot for my liking. And also, it's something that people do mention, but I don't think people mention how uh, much of a noticeable difference it is. It's the fact that the color gamut on the MacBook Air is nowhere near as good as the MacBook Pros. And while that is, of course, a benefit to professional uh, artists and color graders, to the average consumer like you and me, you might just be on uh, Safari or Google Chrome, but just... Anything on the device looks so much more vibrant with that higher color gamut. It's a bit like comparing an old TN panel to OLED, right? The color vibrancy is just so much more pleasant to your eye with this higher color gamut that to an average consumer, I think it's a genuine benefit. And I think it's something I've definitely heard it brought up a lot, but I don't think it gets the credit it deserves in terms of how much it improves the uh, general viewing experience for someone who isn't like a professional video editor or photo editor, for example. So all in all, it's a very balanced device. That's the best way to say it from a general user's perspective. It's highly mobile and also something someone mentioned to me is if you take the word laptop in a very literal sense, something that you can use maybe on the couch on your lap. The 13-inch MacBook Pro is very good for this. It's just light enough uh, and weighs just little enough that if you put it on your lap and you use it for long periods of time, it feels absolutely fine, no issue. But if you take something like the 6-inch MacBook Pro and put it on your lap, I will admit it does feel a little bit big and a bit cumbersome. And although I haven't been on a train in a very long time, thanks to the uh, current COVID situation, I can definitely say that a 6-inch MacBook Pro would be too wide to comfortably sit on a train seat where people are all bunched together, whereas the 13-inch MacBook Pro would be confined enough to where it would be much easier to do. So in terms of general mobility, like it can be a thing that's very easy to overlook, but when you actually start using them, uh, the 13-inch MacBook Pro um, really does have an edge over its 16-inch bigger brother. And of course, if you really want to use a bigger screen, but also be a macOS, naturally, you can just connect it to an external display. And I found myself doing that a lot recently. And when you do that and go into the clamshell uh, mode, so you're just using an external keyboard and a mouse, you sort of forget you're using a 13 inch device because it's just so capable using it on the external display. You just forget the maybe small drawbacks of being an i5 over an i7 or an i9 or the fact it doesn't have a dedicated GPU because you forget all that and just embrace the fact it's a pretty seamless experience. So uh, yeah, it's a good device. And if you're someone who maybe hasn't gone into MacBooks yet, it's a very good entry point because it is so balanced. It's not the massive commitment, the massive financial commitment that is of the six inch model, but I think it manages to get away from some of the very obvious weaknesses of the MacBook Air. Um, I will say though, I think it is 
a little bit expensive for what it is. That's sort of the case of Apple, the classic Apple tax. I think if you were to sort of shift their model price ranges down an echelon, that would be a little bit more understandable. Uh, for this one terabyte model, I paid two grand and it doesn't really feel like a two grand machine. It feels more like one and a half, but ultimately it is a good device, but I think Apple do price it a tad too high. But other than that, it's a good device. I, I can't see anyone really complaining of it too much. It's got no obvious weakness. As long as you go in knowing what it's for, it's not, for example, gonna be a great gaming machine unless you're planning on doing cloud gaming, in which case it should be completely fine. Uh, but general usage and some pro tasks, it's okay. Just don't go in thinking it's a hugely powerful machine because it, it just isn't. It, it's a capable machine. It's a very good, luxury, well-built machine, but it isn't a powerhouse. As always, people, thanks very much for watching and see you next time.